Hello, I'm Steve Hogarth from Marillion, and uh, it's nice to be here on Rockin' Life. I'm all right, thank you. Yeah, I finally had a short holiday um, at the beginning of January after a very, very busy year last year. Um, don't want another year like that one. It was non-stop. Uh, so I was exhausted by the end of last year, but I'm, I'm fine. I had a, 10 days in, in the sunshine and recover a little bit. And good, yeah, looking forward to the last leg of the tour. Um, and looking forward to the conventions after that. We have these conventions that we do where we play three weekends, one in Holland and one in Montreal and one in, in England. Uh, in March we're going to do those and then we're going to take a break for a few months before we think about making another record or anything. So uh, hopefully this year will be a little more relaxed. <laughs> It's amazing, you know, we never notice. Uh, we just jam. Um, and uh, it took a long time to make this record. We started, I think, in 2010, and the whole of 2011, and most of 2012 uh, on this record, as well as touring, because we were touring as well and doing other things at the same time. I also made an album with Richard Barbieri called Not the Weapon But the Hand, in, or, in amongst all of this. So it was a strange process um, to make this record, a very chaotic process. Um, and uh, we, we found ourselves last year touring in America when it should have been released, but it wasn't finished. And I was actually on the plane going to America, working on the album, compiling lead vocals uh, on my laptop different members of the band and were in hotel rooms working on the record while we were on tour. Mad way of trying to make a record um, and very stressful. But you know, everyone seems to like it, um, which is a great relief. <laughs> Well, there's a song on the album called Sounds That Can't Be Made. And it's really about um, what is unspoken between people. Um, so it's a love song, really. It's about, it's about having a passion for someone which is so big that you can throw it straight into the body of another person without saying anything to them you know, without the need for words. So it's about the transference of, of love or belief or faith from the centre of one person or trust to the centre of another person through, through sheer force of passion and belief rather than through words or music or anything. So it's about playing someone a sound that isn't even there. You know, making music inside another person without them hearing it. So 
song about a child growing up in Gaza and how, how what it is like to grow up in that place and it's a song that says any way you look at this it's not right for people to have to live like that it's not right and if you want to say okay that's a political statement that's anti-Israel or it's anti this or it's anti that or it's partisan or it's racist or whatever you want to say you can say that but that's not what that song is saying there's not one line in that song that says this is Israel's fault I never said it in the song you know a lot of people have come to me since that song very annoyed and upset and said how can you condemn Israel like this and there's not one line it's in their heads that condemnation it's not in the song so it's not really a political song it's a song about the fact that what goes on in Gaza <coughs> the history of that situation and the day-to-day -day, uh, of that situation and the and the political history of that situation and the fact that um, is Israel is is perhaps the West's only ally in the Middle East and so there's a limit to how much the West can upset Israel because they're the only friend we've got or that's the perception um, the fact that because of all of that the the refugee situation in Gaza has never been sorted out not just because of that I mean there are other reasons um, there's a, I mean I could bore you to death with with the situation with Hamas and uh, the, the PLO and Arafat and everything else but uh, that's all history that's the stuff the politicians do but my job is to just say that child should not have to live like that that's not right and that's all I'm saying I'm not saying whose fault it is I'm saying the world needs to do something about that not Israel I'm not saying Israel needs to sort this out I'm saying the world needs to look after these people they deserve better they deserve um, they deserve at least to be able to dream of a better future and at the moment they can't even dream of it being better and when you put people in a situation like that don't be surprised if bombs go off on airplanes don't be surprised because sometimes when people are desperate their young men usually their young men will do desperate things it is but we did I don't think we deliberately said okay we're in Paris let's play this or that but what we have done is we've we were rehearsing on Monday and Tuesday this week um, and running through a lot of stuff and it's sounding really good the band's playing really well at the moment it was it was a really uh, rehearsals are usually a miserable process but I really enjoyed it this week um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna play a few songs from the new album and we're going to play those both nights, Friday and Saturday. And in addition to the new stuff, we're going to play a selection of old stuff, but that will be different from Friday to Saturday. So if somebody's coming to both shows, they'll see a lot more music. They won't just see the same thing twice, you know. Um, and then when we move uh, down to Lyon, then maybe we'll throw something else in. You know, We, we now have enough songs rehearsed so that... Um, we can what we usually do is during the sound check we usually get together and go what should we do tonight you know and we write a set list so that changes uh, each day as he's worked with me on the uh, the H band um, on the H band tour and he's um, he's um, an English guitar player but he's, he's, he's from Pakistan um, his parents are from Pakistan he was born in um, he was born in Manchester and he grew up listening to Indian classical music but then he, he then he listened to rock and roll 
So he's a rock and roll guitar player who plays Indian music, which is quite an unusual thing, quite a rare thing. And he'll be performing with uh, Dalbir Singh Ratan, who'll be playing tabla, who also played in my H band a few years back. So they're good friends, and um, it's nice to have them. <laughs> Yes, drink more cognac. Um, it's nice to be here. We'll see you um, either in Paris or Lyon or Toulouse. And failing that, take good care of yourselves. We'll come back soon. Vive la France.